good evening everyone welcome to phase 1 of inspire tech v2.0 the phase where you can gain knowledge and showcase your brilliance i am imaga sundarayanu signing in as the moderator for the day As we embark on this inspiring journey, now I invite Kasundi Nilagolla, co-chairperson of Inspire Tech V2.0, to deliver the welcome speech and make the honor of address the gathering. Kasundi, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Marka, and good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guest speaker and honored participants, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. It is with great pleasure and enthusiasm to extend a heartfelt welcome to this special gathering. Today marks a significant moment, a convergence of minds, ideas, and shared aspirations. Whether you are here as distinguished guests, participants, or friends, your presence adds immense value to this occasion. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to warmly welcome our honored guest speaker, Dr. Vishaka Basnaika, lecturer at SRTC Research University, who is the keynote speaker for today's session. Your expertise will undoubtedly enrich the minds of all participants. And to all the participants, your presence here today is what makes this event come to life. Your enthusiasm, passion, and commitment to this session and competition are the driving forces behind the success of Inspire Tech V2.0. Let today be a day of inspiration, learning, and meaningful connections. Let us engage in open dialogue, embrace different viewpoints, and sow the seeds of collaboration that will bear fruit long into the future. Once again, a warm welcome to everyone. May our time together be filled with a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Over to you, Inika. Thank you, Kasundi, for the warm welcome. Today, we embark on a journey to encourage and support female undergraduates and also the young generation in their pursuits of success and professional growth. Without further ado, let's move forward with our agenda. Today is the second day of our MATLAB workshop series. This session is based on the topic basics of MATLAB. Moving on with the events proceeding, we have our esteemed guest speaker to conduct the session. Lecturer at the Department of Telecommunication, SLTC Research University, Dr. Vishaka Basnaika. Dr. Vishaka, the virtual stage is yours. Good evening, everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me. So yes, madam, you are audible now. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me here today, uh, and uh, this uh, workshop uh, would like to conduct uh, uh, the first part of the workshop today. And uh, the second part I will do, I think, uh, after tomorrow. So, um, yeah. So, I have a question to ask, first and foremost, from you. Uh, the question I have is, do you have MATLAB installed in your computers? So, I just want to know, like, whether you have MATLAB versions installed in your computers. And if you don't, then... Um, I would like to provide you some, you know, guidance in uh, installing the MATLAB software. So as for the first part of this um, session, I think I will explain to you about how to install MATLAB in your computer. Uh, so actually, uh, uh, most of the time, it's a little bit difficult to obtain the latest version of license, I mean, licensed version of MATLAB uh, installed in your computer. Uh, without uh, having some, you know, university affiliation uh, 
so uh, in in most cases like if you are a student of some university which is having the maplab license you can install it very easily without um, paying for the license otherwise as a uh, individual you need to pay for it uh, so alternative solutions are there so there are some links in the websites in the in the web that you can uh, you can have to install uh, the software right uh, so uh, if you're if you're having matlab being installed in your computer it's fine otherwise i think i will give you a, a installation link uh, that is available in the internet basically to download the software and use it uh, as a um, uh, as a version in your computer but uh, note that it is not the like licensed version so you would have to uh, you know follow a certain steps to get it installed so uh, so I think I will give that link to you first. So if you don't have MATLAB, you can uh, use, use that to install that uh, software in your computer. Right. So I think this is not the uh, most licensed version, but I believe this is going to be some option for you. If you are going to, um, if you need the, uh, you know, latest version of MATLAB installed in your computer, so I actually tried to install this even recently and it worked. So you can get uh, maybe 2023 version from this link. Uh, otherwise, I think if you are a student at SRTC, you can ask for the MATLAB version available at, at SRTC. Uh, however, of course, it's I think 2015 version. Uh, so 2015 version is um, kind of okay, but it has lesser functions. So uh, if you can obtain the most uh, recent version of MATLAB, I think it would be more convenient for you when you're trying to do some computational tasks. Uh, so this link you can use to download the uh, MATLAB. Uh, so in, uh, in there, actually, when you're installing, you need to follow the, uh, you know, readme text that you get. Uh, so basically, you just need to follow the instructions that are given in the readme text and uh, get the necessary folders installed in that certain manner. It includes the installation keys and the license files uh, that you need in the installation. So you don't have to, uh, you know, get, uh, you don't need any other information. All the information are given in the readme text. So you can follow that certain steps. And if you fail to do the installation, uh, you can let me know. I will help you in that process. Currently, um, I think I will not be, you know, uh, spending, uh, you know, time on the, the installation part in this session. But uh, if you face some problems, you can just email me or you can send me the error. And then I will I will help you. Um, however, uh, it's a not that difficult task. You can follow the readme text. If you fail some problems, I will assist you in that regard. So let's start with the MATLAB introduction. And uh, in here, I will be you know, going uh, with the introduction first about MATLAB. Uh, and uh, we will discuss about how MATLAB interface looks like. Uh, and uh, uh, after that, we will have some um, you know, understanding about the different functions that are available in the MATLAB uh, and the different commands that we can use to access those, um, uh, access those functions. Uh, apart from that, we will also learn how to uh, write scripts uh, and how to organize our scripts in, in the MATLAB, uh, in, in the MATLAB. So we will learn how to organize a certain code and a readable code in the MATLAB. Apart from that, we will also learn about the basic uh, if else conditions, while loops, uh, and similar you know, structures that we can use to uh, define a certain algorithm in the math lab. Uh, also, we will learn about plotting, how we can do plots, how we can draw plots using MATLAB. So we will learn about 2D plots, 3D plots. Um, apart from that, we will also learn about uh, sample simulations and how we can uh, do some, some simulations called as Monte Carlo simulations. 
So if you, I don't know whether you're familiar with it, but uh, Monte Carlo simulations is something that is widely used in uh, numerical simulations when you're doing simulations in, uh, for example, in research. So uh, apart from that, we will learn about the example scripts that can be, uh, you know, uh, and I mean, that can be uh, written in MATLAB. Uh, and then we will see how we can see the output of the code. Apart from that, um, at the end of the, uh, I mean, today's session, we will learn about MATLAB Simulink, how we can do simulations in the MATLAB Simulink environment. Uh, apart from, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, after learning MATLAB Simulink, we will learn about how we can com uh, how we can compare the performance of Simulink and then performance of the code, code-based uh, simulation. Uh, also, at the end of today's session, I hope to give a small quiz. So I I, I invite you to be, uh, you know, uh, present in the lecture or in the session so that you can face the quiz uh, in a, a successful manner. So I just also want to ask you one thing. Um, do you have, have you formed into groups? Right. Have you formed into groups within yourself uh, for, for this program? So if you have formed into groups, you can let me know as yes, or you can put your hands up in your in the meeting, in this meeting. If you have formed into a group and if you have a certain group that you belong into. Okay, I think one student has raised hands. Okay. Okay, so um, if you have a group, it's good. Uh, do you have a group name or a certain ID that, that can uniquely identify your group? Okay. If you have a group, I think so. You can. I think I have some idea now that you have a certain group uh, within which you work in, uh, which is good because at the end of today's session, I will give a small quiz, and then you can participate to that quiz as a group if you want, or else you can individually participate. And then you can contribute your mark to the group. Uh, so what I mean is that since you're at home and you're joining online, maybe it's better that you individually participate to the quiz. Uh, and then uh, at the end of that uh, quiz, I will allocate the mark of your mark to your respective group. So, uh, so it's like that. So since you have a group, I will allocate marks like that. I hope it's fine with you. And do uh, you have any questions? You can let me know in the chat or you can speak up at any time. And we would, uh, so I would like to resolve your uh, problems. So I think we will start now. And I will share my screen uh, and I will explain about uh, the introduction uh, or the introduction, I mean, introductory facts regarding MATLAB. Okay, so I will use this whiteboard to make notes. Uh, I will share that note with you as a link, and then you can refer to that later as well if you want. So, uh, so the first 
uh, I mean, thing that we can uh, discuss about MATLAB is that, um, so I think my handwriting, I would like you to uh, just excuse my handwriting sometimes because it's maybe it's not that uh, okay, but uh, I would like to give some brief uh, briefing about uh, the MATLAB and what is MATLAB. So MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. Uh, Matrix Laboratory. So uh, basically, uh, MATLAB works with uh, uh, vectors and matrices. So you can say basically matrices. So it's designed to work with matrices. So designed to work with matrices. So whatever you define in here, in the MATLAB environment, it will basically be a matrix. So uh, you are uh, basically defining matrices when you're uh, defining some variable, when you're defining some integer, uh, any kind of a data you are defining, it, it will actually be a matrix in the MATLAB environment. So uh, that is why this uh, uh, MATLAB software is named as matrix laboratory as well. So it is actually doing work mainly with matrices. So, um, so we, uh, so what is the importance of uh, working with uh, matrices? You will ask. So when we are having to deal with large arrays, large arrays or li large uh, data sets, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, you can uh, easily, I mean, work with these kind of large data sets when they are in the matrix form, right? Easily, uh, you know, do the computation using um, matrices, you know, we can do uh, computations with uh, lesser uh, steps, you would say, uh, and lesser delay when we are considering the data sets as matrices. So we convert these uh, arrays or lists, we would, we would say, like list of data. If we have some list of data, let's say one, two, three, four, some kind of a list, right? If we have a list of data, we can convert that list into a vector or a matrix. So if we have a, a array or a list, we can convert that into a vector. If we have a, a data set with multiple uh, rows and multiple columns, we can convert that data into a matrix. So we can have data sets that has multiple rows and multiple columns. So for the moment, let's say that that matrix is uh, like an integer matrix. So that matrix is the integer matrix, or it's the data set that contains basically integers. We can um, we can define that uh, a data set as a matrix uh, of data, or matrix of data. So once we have defined that matrix of data, then we can easily manipulate the values of this matrix. Um, and then we can do multiplications, we can do additions, we can do uh, subtraction, division, Likewise, we can do multiple mathematical functions on top of this matrix that we have defined. So uh, sometimes the data set that we collect might not have only integers. We might have to filter only integers from that data set. We have, and then we can, or we, we would have to create another new matrix. Uh, anyway, like uh, if, you, if you can create a matrix, then you, after that, you can easily do the computation on top of the matrix. So uh, anyway, so once you have these large amounts of large uh, large arrays or large data sets with a large number of data, it is easy to convert and co consider those uh, data as uh, as uh, you know, matrices. We can easily manipulate them as matrices 
um, and when we compare with other programming languages, those languages do not sometimes have these facilities. Sometimes they are uh, taking more time to compute uh, these large data sets when compared with the MATLAB. Sometimes with MATLAB, you can do the computation within seconds um, because it has this matrix based you know environment to do the computation but in uh, other languages sometimes you define it as a list not as a vector and you define as a data set not as a matrix in that case sometimes that computation takes more time to uh, finish okay so Okay. So, uh, one of the main advantage of MATLAB is basically that it deals with vectors and yeah. matrices. It, it deals with vectors and matrices. So, there are multiple applications of MATLAB. So, uh, MATLAB is used in multiple domains. Uh, so, uh, one of the application areas is, uh, we can say, communication systems. So, communication systems. In communication systems, when you are dealing with, uh, you know, uh, uh, transmission of data uh, and then reception of data, you will uh, model the transmission and reception using MATLAB, um, and you can model the different effects of the channel conditions in the communication using MATLAB. So uh, basically, in wireless communication, telecommunication, you are using MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB software, uh, and you can accurately observe the uh, effect of uh, the communication uh, on the transmission, right? So, I mean, you can accurately model the communication and you can accurately see uh, the transfer of information from uh, the transmission side to the reception side. Uh, and uh, you can, uh, you know, you can do research and you can study a certain uh, scenario using uh, the simulation that you have created, right? So, I mean, just explaining a scenario where you're transmitting data from, let's say, uh, from a certain mobile phone uh, to a certain base station. And uh, the base station could be uh, in a certain faraway location. Once you're sending the data, you will be sending some uh, you know, stream of data and it will go in the form of a wave. Uh, so anyway, once you're sending a certain stream of bits and uh, ones and zeros, let's say, you're sending a certain ones and zeros. Uh, however, like due to the effects of the channel, certain uh, signal, um, uh, I mean, the original signal that was transmitted will get uh, impacted by the noise uh, and other uh, factors such as interference. So noise interference, those could in impact the uh, original data that you're transmitting from the mobile device. At the base station, you can observe a certain uh, data stream and that data stream sometimes might have some error when you're compared with the original data. So it can, uh, it can be consisting of a certain stream of data, which is not exactly the same to the original data, uh, but a little bit different. So what we are doing in this MATLAB simulation is that sometimes, I mean, there are many metrics that you can consider. One metric could be uh, finding the error rate or the beta rate of the sim of the communication. So you can find the beta rate from the simulation. And uh, you can find other variables also about the communication. Right, beta rate you can find then you can find the communication capacity or the communication rate, communication data rate. So, uh, so data rate of the communication you can find. Uh, and other metrics also you can define for the system, such as outage probability, outage probability, and so on. So you can define different performance metrics for the communication system. Uh, and these uh, performance metrics can also be defined in the MATLAB environment. 
uh, and then you can use the MATLAB environment to measure, measure the uh, measure the beta rate, data rate, outage probability. Likewise, uh, MATLAB can be used to measure these metrics. Right. Apart from that, so I mean, likewise, I mean, you can develop algorithms in the MATLAB environment, and you can test the algorithms under different scenarios using MATLAB. So uh, another uh, essential thing regarding, uh, I mean, another application that uh, uh, we can use MATLAB for is signal processing. So signal processing is another application in which uh, you can uh, process the signal uh, and then you can um, obtain the information, uh, useful information from the signals. So, um, so this includes uh, processes such as filtering, right? Filtering uh, and uh, obtaining uh, data which has lesser noise included in them and then uh, using that data to make uh, predictions regarding the original data. So you can use uh, different, I mean, uh, processors under signal processing. Uh, you can do filtering, you can do estimation of the uh, data. Uh, and you can do optimization. Uh, so, so these are all like mathematical um, procedures that uh, that are used in signal processing. And these uh, procedures can be implemented in the MATLAB environment. Uh, also, uh, MATLAB is widely used in the dynamic control systems. Oh, uh, we, we call uh, this as... Uh, basically something used in the robotics, you would say. So in robotics um, and industrial automation systems, uh, you use dynamic control uh, systems and you define um, uh, systems and you define the input output of the system and you define the transfer function of the system. So you can define the uh, such, I mean, input output of a system using a matrix and uh, the transfer function of the system using another uh, matrix. So, so if you say a dynamic control system that consists of input data, input signals, X1, X2, and then that system will have outputs of Y1, Y2. And the transfer function of the system will be defined using this matrix. So uh, for dynamic control system modeling, MATLAB can be used uh, heavily, and then uh, it will be easy platform to define the uh, define these kind of systems. Mainly because these systems are already defined as vectors and matrices. So um, because MATLAB is already built uh, for dealing with matrices, then uh, you can easily define these systems easily in the MATLAB. Uh, right. So, so I believe that in the previous sessions you have learned about Python. So Python also is a, a language that can be uh, used simultaneously with MATLAB. Python also has, uh, you know, commands that does the same uh, operations that MATLAB is doing. Uh, like uh, there are different commands that can be used for uh, such uh, functions to. Uh, I mean, to implement such functions. Um, however, like MATLAB uh, shows the raw, uh, raw um, features or raw um, uh, behavior of the data, or it shows how the data is stored uh, as a matrix uh, in, the, uh, in the software. So we will see about all that. Uh, so now we will uh, we'll inspect about those. Uh, features of the map. So I believe you can see my screen. So there are, so I will show, I will uh, include in, in explain some things on this whiteboard. Then I will explain how uh, some MATLAB functions are working in this interface. So basically MATLAB interface, once you consider the MATLAB interface, it consists of mainly about uh, uh, mainly three parts. Uh, and in addition, we have the toolbar on top. 
So in the uh, in the user interface, basically you have this directory where the current folder is shown. So um, you can see multiple you know MATLAB files. If there are MATLAB files, you can see them in this current folder section. Uh, so um, so these these files are actually located in the path that is specified in this directory which is uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this place right in this uh, in this path this small strip of uh, a small white strip you can see uh, we have defined a certain path so uh, the files that are available in that path are given in this current folder section Apart from that, like in the uh, in the bottom to that section, we have the workspace, and the workspace is uh, defining all the variables that we have defined uh, in the system so far. So uh, all the variables and their values are given in here, right? So uh, once you once we write a code, we will be able to see the values of the. Uh, uh, we will be able to see the values of the variables uh, inside this. Uh, I mean, uh, we will be able to access the variables using the workspace. Okay. So we will see once we have uh, we have typed a certain code, we can see the variables appearing in here. Right. And this uh, entire section is known as the command window. So the command window is used to run different codes or different commands individually line by line so if you want to uh, uh, if you want to see the effect of a certain code line by line you can uh, see the effect in the command window right so that for that we can use the command window uh, so the workspace can be used to store the variables their names their sizes and their values so this uh, workspace contains all the information regarding the variable its name its its size and its value. Once you double click on the variable type, you will be able to see if there are values. And the current folder in which you are working will be given in here, and all the files included in that current folder will be disposed there. So if you are, uh, so yeah, we will get into uh, running the codes that we have already but before that we will go into the command window and how we uh, we can use the command window right so uh, so as i said before uh, matlab is a, a user interface that allows us to i mean it's a software that allows us to define vectors and matrices right so basically you can define with uh, matrices um, you can define vectors using the software, then you can uh, see the output as well in the command window. So basically, if you want to uh, if you want to define certain vector, you can define it as, if you want to define a vector as A, uh, A equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can uh, define it as like this. So this is a, a row vector. If you want to give a column vector, and uh, you can actually give the uh, elements, and you can put a semicolon at the end of each element. So uh, if you give a uh, semicolon at the end of each element, you'll be able to see the column vector. Uh, and uh, for the last element, you don't need to give a, a semicolon. Uh, however, now, uh, if you give a semicolon to each of the elements, you will be able to obtain a, a column vector. Right? Uh, so this is how the, how the rows and uh, uh, columns can be defined in the MATLAB. Uh, so, if you want to give a matrix, you can also define a matrix uh, using um, using basically both these characteristics. So let's say I want to define a matrix, then I will uh, say that uh, I want to define a matrix which is uh, uh, which is having two rows and three columns. So uh, by defining, I will be defining it as like this. So I will be having a matrix which is having two rows and uh, three columns. 
Right. So the columns are defined by the semicolon. So at the end of the first row, we need to define the colon. So uh, that is regarding defining vectors and matrices. Right. So now we will see how we can uh, how we can uh, do special functions on these uh, vectors and matrices. And uh, so if you want to find the transpose of a certain metric or so vector, you can define that using a single quotation mark. And so if I want to get the transpose of a certain metric, uh, if I want to get the transpose of C, then I will use C dash, then I will get the transpose of that uh, metric. Right? So, transpose of this matrix I have obtained in here. Okay. So, you can do that by using C and single quotation marks. C quotation marks. Right. So, um, apart from that, there are other special matrices that are defined for MATLAB. Uh, so one matrix is the identity matrix. Right? So um, identity matrix is one of the special matrices that you learn with mathematics, right? So identity matrix is a matrix that has um, ones in the diagonal and zeros in the other element of the matrix. So if you want to define identity matrix, you have to use a command code. I right. command called I and inside here you can define the size of the identity matrix. Right. So you must have learned in mathematics that identity matrix is a square matrix. Right. So uh, it will always have same dimensions both in the uh, horizontal uh, horizontal way and in the vertical way. So uh, if you define the identity matrix, three by three identity matrix, then you have to define uh, that using the command i inside brackets three. So then you will obtain something like this. Right? So i is the command you use to obtain identity matrix. And then, um, so if I want to clear this command window, now I have gone through some commands in here, right? And sometimes I don't want all this information. Right? So uh, what is the command that I can use to clear all this information? Do you know about that command? You can use CLC, right? CLC, and it will clear the command window data, and uh, you can get a clear window. So, uh, so I was talking about the identity matrix. I will repeat that again. Right. Then, however, like again, I will also anyway, I will define it again. I will define it again as I which I prefix three. Also, you can notice that once we define different variables, all those variables that we have defined, which were A, C, and D, are installed in here. Right? A, C, D, transpose C, those are stored in here. Right in the workspace. And you can see the values of the variables by double clicking on the uh, certain variable. Then you can uh, see the elements. Right. So, uh, so you can see the values of each of the variables that by double clicking on the variable in the workspace. Right. So So then transpose C, you can see as the transpose of this uh, matrix that we have defined. 
So you must be uh, you must be able to observe that all these variable values are given like in Excel sheet, right? This is similar to something like Excel sheet, and it's very easy to work with these data once they are in that format, right? And then uh, uh, so whenever we want to inspect some variable, uh, you can inspect through this workspace, and then you can inspect the values of this variables using this uh, workspace uh, and in this manner, in this format. So up to now we have uh, discussed about the identity matrix and now we will discuss about how to create a unity matrix. The unity matrix is another special matrix that we learn about and uh, unity matrix is something that we know as the matrix that has ones in all its elements. So, so it is defined as ones. And unity matrix is also, uh, I mean, unity matrix can be defined um, in different manner. So we can define it as either square matrix and as well as uh, any dimension matrix. So, uh, once uh, inside brackets four gives us a four by four square matrix, and then uh, a once one comma four gives uh, as a vector or a uh, I mean a row which has one row yes. and four yes. columns. Yes. So basically, it's a row, and uh, uh, we can obtain this by defining the uh, dimensions correctly inside the ones yes, function. Right? So you can create any any type of, uh, I mean, any uh, matrix with uh, any kind of a size using the ones command. So if you want uh, other variable which has matrix, I mean, which has a size of two by three, you can create that using one inside brackets two by three. You will obtain identity, sorry, unity matrices of any size by using ones and uh, by defining the number of rows and number of columns inside the bracket. Can uh, okay, so do you have any questions up to this point? So we can easily share this parameter if we if we can because we have this number of contexts uh, in this parameter. Uh, then, uh, then after I uh, increase the context in this uh, share the knowledge base, then we can share this. Uh, oh, uh, okay, Go moving ahead, I will define how we can uh, get a zeros, completely zeros matrix yeah. that we can do similar to ones matrix. And in here, you can define a zeros matrix yeah. using zeros function. Yeah. Right? So you can define that in any uh, format that you prefer by giving the dimensions of the specific matrix. So the specific matrix dimensions you need to give inside the bracket. Right, uh, so that is how uh, we can define a spe uh, certain special so matrices, and uh, you can notice that once you are defining the matrices, uh, once you are defining the certain variables, uh, you can see that there's update going on here in the workspace, um, and like if you observe the different variables available in the workspace, you can see that the values of the variable will be updated to the most recent value. Right. So recent value of H is this uh, matrix with uh, two rows and three columns. And that value is given in here. Right. Uh, so if you can remember, we gave this uh, value as the H uh, when we first defined H. We first defined H as zeros matrix which has three by three column, right? three by three uh, dimensions. So in that case, uh, the H matrix had this dimension. However, now since we have defined H uh, as two by three metric, 
then the value for dimensions of the edge has updated as two by three metrics in the workspace. So note that only the latest value that we define for the variable is stored in the workspace as the value of that certain variable. Okay, so that is something that you might have to remember. Uh, so uh, basically because when you are defining a certain variable and then you are changing the value of the variable multiple times, uh, then only the last value that you that you saved uh, uh, for that value uh, for that variable is stored as the final value of that variable. Right, the last value you store uh, for that variable, the, the last value you give for that variable is the value that is stored in the workspace. So the previous values will be erased and that value will be replaced by the recent value. So another important matrix type that we want to generate using MATLAB is the random matrix. So random matrix mm -hmm. can be generated using a function called RAND uh, so uh, in here you can define any you know random uh, matrix that you prefer. So if you want a three by three matrix, you can define it as three basically, and you will get three by three uh, random yeah. matrix. One thing you can notice is that uh, mm -hmm. the values of all these elements are below or between zero and one, right? So the values of these elements are between zero and one, right? So if you if you want to get a, a value yes. which is between another range, you will have to uh, multiply this matrix by a certain other number and then obtain the range that you want. So with the default rand function, we get this. Um, you, we get these values for the elements. Right, the, the values will be basically between 0 and 1. Right. So similar to the previous cases, right, uh, you can define different matrices I mean, with different dimensions. So different dimensions can be defined inside the variable, uh, inside this brand function, and inside the brackets, you can define the dimensions of the matrix. So the dimensions... Uh, Correspond to two rows and three columns, you can obtain a matrix like this. And uh, if you want to, uh, I mean, uh, if you want to run this command again, right, you can see that these matrices are different, right? Uh, that is also something that you might notice, and that is the important fact to notice um, in the MATLAB. So, uh, so, the, so as of now, once we are calling the rand yeah. function, an another time, a, a new set of numbers are generated for this y value. A new set of values are generated. Right. So, if I run this rand function again, another new set of values are generated. Right. So you must be able to, I think, observe that the values that we generate from here are not equal to the values that we generated earlier. Right. So that is due to something, uh, the something related to this rand function. We will learn about that as well. So, uh, that is, um something that we need to know in order to control the output that we can obtain from this RAND function. Right? At some point, we want to control the random values that are generated from this RAND function. We need to define something uh, something for this RAND function. And uh, we need to define a certain seed value for the RAND function. And so we will define that in later section of today's uh, session. Uh, so for the moment, you can uh, just uh, keep in, in the mind that 
the rand function will generate new or different random numbers uh, at each different uh, iteration that we call that function. Uh, so I will clear the space. So CLC is a command that we, that I use to clear the command window. So uh, another thing is that if I want to obtain a previous command, I can basically go to this uh, command window and press the top arrow in the keyboard. Then using the top arrow, you can access the previous commands that you have given in the command window, right? So you can access the previous commands um, that you have defined in the command window using the upward arrow in the, the keyboard. Right? So in the keyboard, you can just uh, click the upward arrow. You can access the previous commands easily. You don't have to type them again. Right? So, right? Um, uh, yeah, actually, uh, right. So I think, uh, right. Anyway, I think I will uh, discuss no, about this brand brand yeah, function yeah. here itself. I think mainly because it's going to be easy uh, for me to explain it here rather than somewhere else. So. I will uh, now. I will show you that this brings some set of values uh, to the random uh, matrix. Okay. So, if I give a matrix like this, if I generate a matrix like this with two rows and three columns, I will obtain a matrix like this. So if I want to keep this value same all the time. Right. Without uh, inventing new or different random values, right? I need to define something called the seed value. So something called the seed value, I need to define. If I, I will define the seed value as zero. Right? And if I want to generate the same or same same random matrix each and every time, right? I need to define this kind of a seed value, right? And then after that, I can define this rand matrix. Excuse me, madam. Yes. Madam, I think there is a background voice from your end. So yes. if you can, uh, could you please consider about it? Yeah. So, um, are you he hearing some noise currently? Yeah, like uh, some tutoring or something like that. Sorry? Some tutoring voice or something like that we can hear from your background. Okay. Uh, okay, now now it's okay, right? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Thank okay, you. I will try to, yes. I hope it is okay. Yes. So now I think I will generate the random matrix two by three. Right. Now you can see this is the random matrix I have. Right. And if I give the same command again, I should be able to get the same matrix again. Right. So, uh, Right. So earlier, when I did not uh, define the seed value, when I just define the random function and uh, define a matrix using the random function, I was getting different values for the uh, elements in the uh, matrix. Right. I was give, getting different values for these elements. Right. However, now. If I fix the random, I mean, value generation seed value, then I can fix the random numbers that are generated as the elements in here. I can get the same elements each and every time I call this command, right? So whatever the number of times I call the same command, I will get the same 
value for the matrix. However, if I do it without defining the seed value, if I remove this, if I, if I call that function without a seed value definition, and you can see that the numbers that are generated here are different to the numbers that I got earlier. Okay? And each time I call this random function, I will get a new set of data as the element values. Right? As the elements, I will get different values to this element. Right? You will get different values each and every time. Right? So in order to control that, you can use that command that I mentioned before which is uh, basically defining the seed value uh, and then defining that seed value inside this function, um, which we define as RNG, right, RNG, and inside that we define the seed value and that will generate random numbers based on the seed value, right? So, uh, so, the, so once we call this random function, um, each and every time that random function generates that random set of random numbers for this matrix, they will consider this seed value. And only from that seed value, the, the random numbers will be generated. Based on that seed value only, these random numbers will be generated. Otherwise, if you don't specify the seed value, uh, the seed value will be taken uh, by the software itself and the seed value can vary from one uh, one iteration to another iteration. So the seed value, if uh, so, the seed, if the seed value is different, then the uh, random value that is generated is also different. Um, apart from that, like this seed value is the one that defines how the random numbers are generated for for that certain uh, for that certain instance. So uh, what I mean is that once you are generating some random numbers, that random numbers are also generated using certain algorithm in the MATLAB software, right? Random numbers are not just random numbers that the computer takes into account. Computer does not know how to generate a random number. Computer follows a certain algorithm to generate the random numbers. And the computer takes the seed value as the input data to generate a certain set of random numbers. And that's from that certain set of random numbers, certain specific set of random numbers are taken once we call this uh, command. That same specific numbers are taken uh, if, we, if we keep the seed value same. The same specific numbers are taken each time once we call the same command. Right? So uh, basically that is uh, something that you need to know regarding the random number generation. And in MATLAB, you need to define this uh, seed value uh, in the random number generation procedure to obtain the same, um, same values as the output uh, uh, each and every time you call the random function. So, uh, is it clear to you? It is not clear to you. You can mention. Okay. I will go ahead. If you get more questions or difficult sections, you can let me know. Apart from that, like we have something called matrix multiplications, right? So matrix multiplications is another, uh, you know, section that is of importance, I think, since we are dealing with matrix, matrix uh, functions, right? So matrix multiplications can be done in two manners in the math lab. Uh, and uh, basically there are two manners. One is the normal multiplication, uh, where we do the multiplication, uh, the matrices using the uh, mathematical um, procedures of multiplying, multiplying matrices. So there are two types, normal multiplication, where you multiply two matrices, right? Uh, two matrices, 
let's say A and B, for example, uh, A and B, let's say, uh, and these uh, uh, matrices uh, need to be compatible in order to be multiplied. If you are multiplying A and B matrices, uh, you need to make sure the matrices dimensions are matching uh, to be multiplied. So, uh, so you can't uh, sometimes uh, multiply two matrices that are not matching in dimension. So if we consider a situ situation where we have, uh, let's say, A equals to a certain row vector, one, two, three, and B equals to a certain row uh, column vector, four, five, six, and then uh, let's say, let's say eight, right, four, five, six, eight, uh, the matrix A is actually one by three. This is one by three. B is uh, four by one. Uh, so is it possible for us to do multiplication between these two matrices? Can we do A into B? Can we do multiplication between A and B? Right, so this is basically mathematics. So matrix multiplication should be done only with uh, two matrices whose dimensions match, right? Can we do multiplication between these? No, we can't, right? We can't multiply. So thanks, uh, Erosha or Erosha. Uh, so uh, you can't do multiplication between two matrices which are incompatible in the dimensions. So if you try to multiply these two, you will get an error in the uh, math lab saying that the ma dimensions don't match and they are incompatible. We can define these two matrices in the math lab environment. Here we will see how the error or if the error comes. So A equals one, two, three. So it is a row vector. And if you want to give two commands in the same line, we have to uh, give the two commands separating uh, using a semicolon. So I want to define A and B. So B, uh, B I mean, uh, column vector, I can define uh, using this manner. And then semicolon. And then I want to multiply these two. And I will uh, store the values of the multiplication in a variable called D. So I will multiply these. I will store that in a variable for C. I will store the output in C. Right? So if I, yeah, so if I do like that, I will get an error. I will get an error saying incorrect dimension for matrix multiplication. So check that the number of columns in the first matrix matches the number of rows in the second matrix. Right? So likewise, it will give some error. So in order to avoid that error, we, we have to check and we have to maintain the compatibility with the dimensions. We have to multiply vectors with uh, which are matching in dimension, and uh, only then we will be able to do the multiplication. So once we do that, we will get a certain output uh, as the answer. Right? If we do the correct multiplication uh, by considering the dimensions of the vectors, then we'll be able to obtain a certain output from this command. Right? So th that is basically regarding normal multiplication. So this is something that I think you're familiar with. So you can try out with other different types of matrices and you can see the output. Right? So we can actually do some, uh, you know, maybe some other multiplication using rand function, which by defining rand matrix, of two by three, I can multiply that with another uh, uh, rand function, so rand matrix, uh, which is three by two, right? So I can multiply these two and I can save the output into uh, Z. So 
here I'm generating a random function, random matrix, and I'm storing that in X, and I'm generating another random matrix, I'm storing that in Y, and I'm storing, I'm doing the multiplication between X and Y, and then I'm storing the values of the output in the Z variable. So, uh, so we need to check whether these are compatible. So if they are not compatible, I will get an error. Otherwise, I will get an output. The output will be equal to a random function, which is of size 2 by 2. Okay. So uh, you can do multiplication like this. Normal multiplication can be done like this. Right. And uh, we need to check the dimensions, compatibility when you are doing the multiplication. Uh, so another type of multiplication that is basically used is the um, uh, basically the element-wise multiplication. So element-wise multiplication is something that is uh, used uh, for multiplying uh, element by element in the in between the matrices in the MATLAB. So element-wise multiplication. Element-wise multiplication. It is a type of multiplication that can be done uh, between two matrices that have similar uh, dimensions or compatible dimensions. And so in here, basically, if you have two elements or two, I mean, two matrices, then those matrices either should have the same number of uh, rows and columns or else, they should have a compatible, um, either they should be same or else they should be compatible with, with the dimensions. Like the two matrices that are multiplied should be compatible in the dimensions. So what do what we mean by the compatible in the dimensions is that uh, each, right, each value that you multiply the matrix width should be uh, able, uh, should be able to be uh, I mean multiplied singularly with the other element in, in the uh, I mean uh, the second matrix so we will see so let's say I want to multiply a certain vector which is one two three let's say one two three I want to multiply it with um uh, with the I mean with a column vector which has values one, two, three, four. Right? If I want to do an element wise multiplication, I can do this without any problem. Uh, and the, the uh, so the reason is that I can multiply each of these elements with this certain uh, column vector. Each of these elements can be multiplied with this column vector. And I can produce a matrix at the end. Right? So we will see how we can how you do the element wise multiplication in the command window. So the basic difference here is that once you do the element wise multiplication, you will uh, multiply uh, the other matrix with a dot dot command in here. Right? So you have a dot operation done before the multiplication or before the star sign, right? So you will say A dot star B. So in here, when you want to do element wise multiplication, you will need to do uh, dot star. Uh, you need to use dot star to do the element wise multiplication. So if you, right? So let's say, um, Right. So if we have uh, this first, uh, if, uh, if we try to do the multiplication with these two matrices A and B, let's say we can do the uh, let's say if we can do the element-wise multiplication there. Right, element-wise multiplication I will do. So. Uh, between A and B, we can do element-wise multiplication. The reason being the same scenario that I mentioned in here. 
that a is equal to a certain row vector and b is equal to a certain column vector and these are uh, these can be uh, multiplied element wise which means that each element in the first vector can be multiplied with the uh, with the second vector each element can be singularly multiplied with the second vector so uh, element wise we can do the multiplication and get the output okay uh, so sometimes we might not be able to do element wise multiplication so in this case we might not be able to do the element wise multiplication we will see right we will see whether we can do multiplication between x and y in the element wise multiplication manner so if i define another variable let's say x dot uh, y right? so see it gives me an error says that arrays have incompatible sizes for this operation which means that i cannot multiply two uh, vectors or i mean in here th these are matrices of size two into three and the other one is three into two and if that is the case we cannot multiply element wise between these two matrices the reason being that element wise multiplication cannot happen when the uh, then the number of rows in here uh, is, sorry the number of columns in here is different to the number of uh, rows in here right so when you are doing element wise multiplication the uh, we need to visualize the uh, matrix we need to visualize the dimensions of the matrix when we are doing element wise multiplication we don't uh, uh, understand that we might uh, run into errors in the uh, in the code right so uh, so rather than uh, doing multiplication in that manner if we had done multiplication with a uh, with another uh, you know uh, with another matrix of similar size of similar size we'll be able to do element wise multiplication and there won't be any error in here right so uh, element wise multiplication requires us to understand the dimensions of the matrices uh, and uh, if the dimensions of the matrices are not compatible uh, then we cannot do the multiplication in the element wise manner uh, so we might run into errors if we uh, multiply two matrices with uh, incompatible sizes um, uh, if, if we try to do the element wise multiplication in that scenario so uh, basically like you need to consider the sizes of the matrices uh, and consider the sizes of the matrices to do the element wise multiplication okay so there's a, a nice uh, explanation about this element wise multiplication in the mathworks website as well so uh, that is something that i will mention to you at the uh, end of today's class how you can access uh, data and how you can access uh, information from the MathWorks website uh, easily and how you can understand the resources in there. So basically all the things that we are learning today, they are, I mean, uh, available for, um, I mean, they are already available in uh, online resources that you can refer uh, and uh, you can refer some examples related to to uh, certain functions, certain um, certain other commands that we give in here, you can refer to examples that are available in the MathWorks website. So, so up to that point, we have uh, decided uh, we have uh, discussed about the element-wise multiplication. Right. So, do you have any questions regarding that?
first, so when we uh, discuss about the element wise operations, there are also other operations such as squaring, division, also available in the math class. So, um, apart from the multiplication, you can do division in the element wise manner. You can do uh, squaring in the element wise manner. So, if you have this, this matrix, you can do element wise division, element wise. Uh, element by division in this manner. I can divide each element by two by giving a dot divide uh, operation and divide by two. Similarly, I can give another command to take the power of each element by two, All right? Each element's power I can take by giving this command. So I can uh, get the uh, value of the uh, uh, squared value of each of these elements using this function. Okay. So maybe we, uh, if you want, we can check that out as well. You can check that and see whether it's actually the case. So we can observe um, if I try to multiply the element, so square the element of the Z matrix. Right. I will try to square this element of this set matrix by um, by multiplying them, multiplying it twice, and I get this value as the output. And the same value I got in here, a uh, similar value, approximately same value I got in here, when I applied the uh, element-wise square function. And uh, that means that each of these elements had been squared uh, individually. Uh, when I did the, this operation on this Z matrix. So, uh, so element-wise operations can be done like that. Right. So now uh, we will actually learn about some special functions that you can use in MATLAB. Uh, and I think that these functions are useful for you. If you are uh, going to do some computations in your assignments or in your classroom, you are going to do some computations. You can use MATLAB to compute the value. So for example, if you want to find the exponential value of a certain number, you can find the exponential value by giving the command exponential or exp. And inside brackets, you can give the value or the number that you want to find the exponential of. So whatever the value that, uh, you will obtain uh, will correspond to the exponential of the uh, exponential of the value that we have given inside brackets. So since I have given exponential of eight, they have given me a large number. But if I give the exponential value to uh, exponential value of maybe certain small number, and I will get a small like a smaller number than before. Right? So in order to, for me to check whether this is actually the exponential function. I can give the value of the uh, exponential as well, right? So if I, uh, right, I can, so exponential value uh, should, uh, so at some point it should be, uh, equal to zero, equal to one. So at uh, at zero, it should be equal to one. So exponential of zero, the output is one. So it shows that uh, the exponential function is uh, defined using this command. And uh, another function that we can do, that we can implement is the log function, logarithmic function. And uh, we can do that using log and inside brackets, uh, I can give the value that I find the log of. However, in here, if I just put the log function as just without any other additions, if I implement it like this, it will actually give me the natural logarithmic value. It will actually give me the natural logarithmic value. So what I mean is that, Right. The log log value will be calculated based on the uh, base of e. 
right? Based on E. Uh, I don't know whether you, uh, you, I think you have learned about uh, logarithmic functions in your math classes. In there, we learn about the natural logarithmic cases, right? So there are basically, uh, I mean, basically most popularly used logarithmic functions uh, in maths. So one thing is the natural logarithmic, which is to the base E, right? So log to the E. So log values to the base E. Uh, so that one, you can uh, give the command in MATLAB as log inside brackets, you can give something in here. And if you want uh, the log value to the base 10, let's say log value to the base 10, I need to give a different command, which is log 10. And inside brackets, I can give the value that I want to compute the log value of. And similarly, for log to the base 2, I can give the command as log 10, log 2. And inside brackets, I can give the value here. So uh, basically, if you use log, log function without any addition of numbers, it basically gives me the natural logarithmic value of a certain number. Right? Natural logarithmic value natural logarithmic value we can get right and uh, in here you can get the logarithmic value to the base 10 and another one is that we can give get the values of logarithmic up to the base 2 using this command so so if I uh, I try to find the natural logarithmic value of 2.718, right? Which is the uh, value which is equal to the uh, the uh, number e or the value which corresponds to e is equal to 2.718. If I do that, uh, I will be able to see the final output is equal to almost one. It means that this log value uh, computes the uh, log to the base e. That is why it gives the value as one during at that time at that, at that uh, value at this two point seven one eight value. The final output will be one, mainly uh, because the input is uh, equal to the base value of the logarithm. However, if I give like y equals log uh, 10, they give me a different value. It will not be 1, it will be something different, which is 2.3 in here. Right? So, similarly, if I give some tool or something, it will give a different value, which is not equal to 1. However, uh, if we try this out with log to the base 10, then if I give 10 inside, I will get 1 as the output. Or, uh, log to the base 2. If I give the log value to the base 2 and inside brackets, if I give 2, then I will get the output as 1. So, when we are defining the log values, we need to define the base uh, properly. We want to get the base uh, to a certain, I mean, base value uh, under a certain uh, base. If you want uh, under base num base 10, need to define it explicitly. So that is regarding logarithmic values. So uh, there was a question in the chat, I think, about the random number generation and how we uh, can get, uh, yeah. So yeah, why we are always getting fractions when we call the random function. So random function is defined by default as uh, a function that generates us um, uh, some kind of fractions. However, if you want integers only, you can define the integers uh, using rand i function, right? You need to give the rand i function in order to obtain integers as the output of the random uh, random uh, matrix or the vector that you define. And uh, uh, so you can get uh, integers 
you use the rand i function. Use just rand. It will give a value between zero and one. Okay. So, uh, so the entire definition of the rand i you can find using this command help rand i. Okay. If you want to know how these random values can be defined uh, in a certain specific manner, you can um, refer the help uh, of the MATLAB and you need to define, you need to refer this uh, information in order to obtain the correct information regarding the uh, function. So uh, when I say run i, you need to uh, define, uh, you can define values inside the rand i function and if you uh, if you define um, uh, right if you define uh, maybe two numbers it gives me uh, n by n matrix if i define two values in here uh, that yeah that gives me uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, a matrix of let's say in here if you define the n value as a certain number uh, then it will give me that certain numbers square matrix and the uh, values of the elements in the matrix will be between one to the value that we define in here right so what happened when i defined the uh, matrix in here was that uh, when i said rand i two comma three it generated me a matrix of three by three and in here uh, the values of the elements will be between uh, one and two between one and two the values are uh, inside this uh, matrix so if you define another value in here let's say five or something values that are coming in the matrix will be between one and five and the matrix size will be three by three Uh, so you can uh, generate integer values also for the random uh, using the rand function, but uh, for that you need to use rand i operation, right? So up to now, I think we learned about specific functions. There are other commands that are also useful, and I think we will go through them. Uh, another command that is useful, and uh, we will go through that as well, which is ordering of the values, right? So um, I will clear this up first. So if I want to order some data, if I want to keep some data in an ordered manner, uh, and I also want to find some values such as minimum value, maximum value, mean value of a certain vector, I can use uh, specific commands in the MATLAB for that. So uh, basically, uh, I, will, I will explain first how we can uh, do the sorting of the uh, elements values in a certain vector. If there is a vector which is having four, two, Three seven, let's say uh, there there are four elements, and I want to uh, I want to find uh, I want to uh, let's say let's start with the uh, sorting function, right? We will sort sort this vector, right? If you want to sort this um, along the um, yeah, so if this is a vector, actually I I can. Uh, basically sort this very easily. However, if it is a uh, matrix, uh, sorting has to be done both in row-wise and column-wise. Right? So if I have a vector like this, uh, I can do the sorting and uh, sorting can be done uh, in the uh, ascending order. So let's say sort of A, and then I will get the output in a certain order, uh, so most probably the values will be sorted in the ascending order. So we will check that. So O, I can design the row vector. 
as O237. In order to make the elements separated, you need to keep the space between the certain specific elements. If you want, you can also add a comma in here to give the uh, elements uh, differentiation. So you can sort out this vector and you can show that in a certain other vector. And uh, so you can basically see that they are sorted in the ascending order. And if I want to find the minimum value of this vector, I can use mean function. This mean of g, let's say, I will get 2. Uh, and max function also can be used to find the maximum value. A mean value can be used. Mean function can be used to find the mean of all the values inside this. Uh, vector. Uh, and then if I have a more um, complex uh, matrix which has um, multiple rows and multiple columns, then I can uh, sort, sort the uh, matrix using uh, uh, by defining the sorting um, direction, whether it should be sorted along the col column wise or sorted along the row wise. So if I have a vector which is defined like this, 3, 7, and 5, uh, 0, 4, 2. Right, so this matrix like looks like this. Right, I have a matrix which is 3, 7, 5, and 0, 4, 2. There are two rows and three columns. If I want to sort the this matrix along the uh, along the row wise, right? If I want to sort it along the row wise, then I can give a command. Let's say R equals um, sort sort P along the row wise. So let's say yeah. So it is. Uh, ordering the elements in each row in ascending order in the row wise direction. So 3, 5, 7, 0, 2, 4 is coming. So I want to do the opposite, which is ordering the element values in the column wise direction. I can do it as sort inside bracket P comma 1, which gives me the values as 0, 3, 4, 7, 2, 5 along the column wise direction. So ascending order can be retained in the column wise direction using uh, this comma p, uh, comma one, right? Comma one, uh, comma one. And then if you do the uh, ordering in the column wise direction. Right, so that is something that again, you don't have to remember, but you can refer the resources and you can get uh, understanding regarding that. Right. So there are similar functions to this, similar to the sort function that uh, uses this row-wise sorting, row-wise um, um, uh, size uh, determining function. That means that if I want to find the size of a matrix in the row-wise direction, then I need to use a specific uh, command. If I want to find it in the column-wise, I need to use a specific command. And that uh, will be uh, defined uh, using the uh, uh, using similar to the sort function where we define the row wise and the column wise based on one and two. Right. So row wise ordering we have done using two, and column wise ordering we have done using one. So uh, that is regarding sorting. And so in order to like you know, understand how these functions work, you will have to refer the documentation regarding the functions of MATLAB. So the easiest one that you can do is go to help and you can type the function that you want to find some data regarding. That you have some function that you don't know the definition, you can go to help and type the function name. It could be sort, it could be uh, mean, it could be max, Whatever the function that you don't know the explanation of, you can type help and you can type the function name. So 
if the MATLAB knows the definition, it will give the definition, its details. Uh, also, it will give the examples that helps you to uh, run the code and identify what the command is doing. And the, this explanation part gives you the definition of the command. So the clear definition of the command can be seen in here. And it will give us how the sort function can be defined. So if you basically define the sort function as it is, it will sort any elements in, inside that in ascending order. However, if there's a matrix that you want to sort, you can define the di specific dimension along which the elements has to be uh, ordered. And uh, the dimension has to be defined as either v as one or two, right? And that uh, you need to define specifically using one or two. Uh, and also this says that there's another method of defining that, that is by defining whether it should be ascending or descending. Right? So you can define whether the uh, ordering has to be done in the ascending order or descending order based on your preference. You can also do that using this manner. Uh, so basically what I wanted to tell you was that uh, for most of the functions, all, all the MATLAB functions, you can find uh, the explanation of that function using uh, once you type help and the function name. Okay? So that is the easiest manner for you to understand the function and its behavior. Apart from that, there are other methods of accessing the data regarding the, um, the function as well. Uh, so the, another method is uh, typing doc, doc and then typing the certain function name. Right. So, and then you will be able to see a certain website uh, popping up, which is uh, which is the website uh, uh, maintained by the MathWorks that gives us the uh, definition of the uh, certain command or the function uh, that is uh, yeah, that is available in the MathWorks website. So this. Uh, doc function gives us this uh, math, the link to the MathWorks website that has this uh, uh, definition. Uh, when you go down, you will be able to see that some examples we will be here. Right? Some examples that are included here, you can see, which uses that function that we defined. So all these examples can be tried out and you can see all the different ways that certain function can be used and so it gives most of the different cases that can be considered right so regarding help and regarding doc that is uh, basically regarding that so uh, so from MATLAB, you can get a lot of data regarding the functions, right? So another thing I wanted to mention is that a matrix indexing. I think uh, that is one of the most important things about MATLAB, right? Uh, so, um, so I have a quiz also that I want to give. Um, However, I think I will discuss this matrix indexing part and then I will get into the matrix indexing. Sorry, quiz part. So I will first discuss about the index indexing. So um, I will clear this command window. Clear I do by CLC. And uh, once I come to this place, uh, I can define a certain matrix. Uh, let's say one, three, seven, and then four, ten, three, right? Four, ten, three, and in here, if I want to obtain some matrix uh, indexes separately, I can uh, right. I can uh, I can access any value in this matrix using the indexing, okay? using matrix indexing, I can access any element that I want in the matrix. So if I want to 
access let's say i want to access one certain element in this matrix what should i give as the command if i want to access the first element in this matrix what should i give as the command as you think I want to obtain the first, very first element. Right. So if I want to get the very first element, I will use uh, A, 1, comma 1. Right, so if I do that, I will be able to get the very first element in the matrix. And if I say, uh, uh, if I want to get the last element, the last element, I can get, uh, I can actually use different methods to get the last element. But first, I will uh, say that I want the last element by saying that I want the a value in the second row in the third column. If I say like that, I will get the number three, which is in the two comma three position. Right? So the matrix indexing is about indexing exactly the element that you want to achieve. Right? Uh, so um, that is how um, that uh, is happening. And if I want to obtain a certain entire row from the matrix A, then I can say um, A, if I want to select all the values in the entire row, uh, I need to say that I want uh, all the values of row 1, let's say I want all the values of row 1, which includes all the values in the columns, I mean, uh, in the row 1. So what I say is that what, what I'm saying is that uh, if I want uh, if I want all the values in the first row, I need the values of all the elements that belong to that row, uh, and all the corresponding column values must come. So I will get one three seven as the output. If I want the second row, I should say a two comma double. Uh, double colon or colon then I will get the second row right so that is how you can obtain certain rows and columns in a matrix and are you able to tell me how you can access a certain column in the matrix let's say I want to obtain all the values in the second column in the in this matrix that I have defined let's say I want all the values in this second column in in this matrix A, how can I obtain that? Can you let me know in the chat or you can let me know? How, how can I obtain all the values in the second column? Yeah. So I think Sahan has given the correct answer, which is um, obtaining the um, values of A under all rows and second column. And that will give me the second column values of the matrix A. So 3 and 10, I obtain. Right, so I think by that, you will be able to understand how you can obtain uh, the element values uh, uh, from a certain matrix. Right, so you need to uh, be really good in this matrix indexing in order to filter out the necessary components from a matrix. Right. So if you have a large data set, let's say, or a list of data, and you want only certain specific uh, amount of data from that list or the matrix, you need to use these indexing methods to obtain the certain range of data inside the list or the matrix. Right. So if you're doing machine learning, if you're doing any kind of signal processing, if you're doing any kind of uh, multiplication, with, uh, between two matrices or between two values, 
then you need to obtain the necessary data from the large data you have. So if you have large amounts of data, you need to extract out the only the important or needed data from the large matrix you have, right? So that uh, extraction can be do done using this matrix indexing, right? Uh, so another uh, has asked about the unsorted matrices and how we can use minimum maximum functions on unsorted matrices. So yeah, we can see that, right? So if we have a certain matrix, let's say B, which I have in an unsorted manner. So I will say it is having elements like this. So I will erase first this command window. I hope you can see the screen. Uh, so I define D as a vector which has value 4, 7, 0, 2. And then I will try to find the minimum of the D. Minimum of D. I will get and I will get the value 0. It doesn't really matter whether I sort the matrix or not. Right? I can find the maximum, minimum those uh, values of the vector without any problem, I don't need to sort them all the time, right? I can find uh, like uh, maximum, minimum, mean value without any problem or any um, vector or uh, I mean uh, for any vector, you can directly obtain the minimum, maximum values without sorting them out. So uh, that is regarding the matrix indexing, right? So uh, if you have any questions regarding metric indexing, you can let me know. Apart from that, if you have a random matrix, let's say, um, some kind of random matrix of which you don't know the size of, right? Let's say, I mean, you you define a certain matrix, you know the size, but uh, but in this case, let's assume that you are you don't have any information about the information included in the matrix, and you want to find the size of this matrix. You want to find the size of the matrix. You can use the command size, right? Size the certain matrix. Right? However, like uh, some uh, some uh, problem or some confusion is there in here, which is that there are two outputs that are coming as the output. There are two outputs. So what do, what do they mean, right? So uh, mainly the first output gives the amount of rows in the matrix. The second output gives the amount of columns in the matrix. Okay? So in order for us to understand that, we can or in order to get a clear uh, idea about that, we can uh, define the output of the uh, command size uh, as uh, as a vector, which we define as rows and columns. Right? So if we do that, then output of this size function will be stored in rows and columns. Right? And then if we run this, it will basically use the rows as two and columns as three. Since we know that the first value actually corresponds to the number of rows in the matrix. And the second element actually corresponds to the number of columns in the matrix. So uh, by doing that, we can, by using the size command, you can find the size of a certain uh, uh, matrix. Right, so yeah. So uh, another thing, I think I will uh, explain to you one more thing before I can move on to the quiz. So, uh, uh, in MATLAB, right, you want to define a very large matrix, a large matrix or a large vector. You can do that easily using um, uh, the, by defining it as uh, using some columns between the two limits that you want the numbers generated. So you will do that. So 
if you want a certain large data set, right, between 1 and um, 10 to the power 5, right? So if I give this, uh, so if I try to, if I run this, it will give a large data uh, array, right? It will have elements up to 100,000, right? right? So that, that can be there. Yeah. So I will clear this up. Then, if I uh, want a subset of the vector that I just defined, right? So let's say I define A as 1, 1 into 10 to the 5, oh, right? So this value, um, so the values of this vector will be between 1 to 10 to the 5. And if I want values, a subset of A, if I want, I can obtain subset of A using um, a command uh, where we take the values of A and only to take the values in, uh, let's say, in the uh, in the odd places of the uh, vector. Right. So if I want a uh, vector a subset of the A vector. And I can uh, obtain that using this command, which says that you, uh, so uh, I'm taking A matrix and inside brackets, I'm taking the values from one up to the last point or the last element of the matrix, um, matrix in consideration. And I take values with spacing of two, which means that I take values of one, three, five, like that up to the end uh, element, right? So I can generate a subset of the main matrix using this uh, command. Also, you can notice that I can use the end word to uh, specify the last element possible. Uh, I don't know exactly the last element in this case, right? So this will generate me a vector with spacing of two. Okay, so if I run this, I can see that only the subset of data is is uh, given to me. So uh, so uh, the last element in here is uh, 99,999, which means that the last element has been omitted because only the odd numbers have been taken in here. So the odd numbers have been taken by that command that we just gave. So uh, when we are handling large data sets, we can uh, we can take parts of that data set using the uh, these kind of uh, indexing uh, and indexing methods. So these kind of indexing methods are useful for us to extract only certain parts of the data that we have. Right. So that is regarding matrix indexing basically. So I think by that point. We can uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, try to uh, uh, like end the session regarding the basics of MATLAB, basic commands in MATLAB. Uh, and uh, with that, I think um, I will be able to move on to the quiz. Right? Before moving on to the quiz, I also want to mention one thing about the matrix indexing, right? Matrix indexing. and so if I try to clear this, um, if I have a certain matrix, let's say two to three, and if I, for example, if I try to index the zero element, it will give me an error, right? Which means that in MATLAB, we have the indexing starting from one, which means that there's no zero element. Right. So if you learned Python, I think in the Python, you must have uh, seen that you can access the zeroth element of a certain vector or a certain list, let's say a list of data or a data set. You can access the zeroth element. You can say uh, the zeroth element of a matrix. But in here, you can't uh, say zeroth element. The element should start with one which means that the indexing starts with one, uh, two, likewise. 
right? So the element uh, indexing starts from one. So if I so if you say that this is sorry, sorry, I so if this is a matrix, I need to define two places. Even if I define two places with zeros, I will get the error. So which means that I can't do zero indexing. Zero indexing cannot be done. Zero cannot be an index in the map path indexing. You need to start with one. The starting index will be always one. Right? So that is basically regarding indexing. So shall we move on to the quiz? So is it okay if I take maybe ten, five more minutes? Right. Uh, I hope it is okay. So I will share my screen. So this is a fun game, fun fun quiz. So you, uh, you can go to the link that I share. I will share the link in the chat. So you can go to this link. So uh, please join the quiz uh, and you can mention your group number, group A, B, something like that, and your name, right, when you are joining. Okay. So please mention your group number, otherwise I might not be able to give marks to your group. Okay, I think only 20 students can join this quiz, right? So only the first 20 can join, okay? So this is like uh, it's that version. So I think uh, there's no option. I would have to go with this, right? And uh, others will have to watch. So I'm sorry about that. So I think I will go ahead with this. So, I think you need to open. I think I will have to stop this for the moment. Okay. It says that I have uh, reached the. This is it.
I don't know why it has stopped. I think 50 people can join for the session. Okay. I think only 10. No, not be because normally I use more than 10 people. So. Anyway, I think uh, I will share the link again. I think only 10 people can join if it is okay with you. So I will share uh, the link with you again and only 10 people can join. So I believe it is the case with that uh, if, if, uh, if you can please join as soon as possible. Only 10 people can join this. So I think that's enough. There's one more. Okay, I think no problem so far. <clears throat> okay, I think we'll start. Right, so. Oh, yeah, more than 20% people I cannot have, so. Mm. Right. So I think even if I start going ahead, I cannot show the questions properly without that. So so is it uh, how many groups are there in your system? Like in your grouping, how many groups are there? Are there like 70, 78 groups? Maybe like that. Right. I think some of you need to be read, read uh, it's about read. 80 groups here. Yeah. 80 groups. I think not all 80 can join this. So it's already getting like uh, if it is about 20. I think they cannot join. So if possible, if one person is there from each team, but even that is not possible, I think. Right? And also there are individual participants as well. Oh. Okay. Okay, so let's not worry about the quiz then. I will not give marks from that to you. So only first 20 can actually uh, join this one. So if possible, if you can I think uh, um, leave or um, if you can just uh, maybe remove or if you can maybe we can play and uh, you know another time right so I cannot actually accommodate more than twenty 
So in here, I think maybe there are 20 people. Yeah, so, right. So I think I will have to remove, I think, some, stu some students, right? So next time, I, I will again share the link. Again, I will create another link for this, and then I will create. So the first 20 can join. I'm sorry about it. And then I will not give you any marks. You will be able to just see how the quiz goes. Right? Otherwise, I think you cannot view the questions. So I will give the uh, link again in the uh, in the uh, in, in this again. Right? So so last uh, I think one people I think I have removed. So, And I will lock this. So when we just uh, students start going, I will start the quiz. You need to look at the screen. Uh, the question is on the screen. You can give the answer from your devices. So what command is used to clear the command window in MATLAB? Yes, so a lot of you got the correct answer. See also is the command used to clear the command window contents. If you use the clear command, it will clear the values of the variables that are stored in the MATLAB workspace. The values of the variables will be cleared once you give the clear command. And if you use other commands, they're actually used for other purposes, close and reset. Reset is not a command that is used by default in MATLAB. Close uh, is a command used, and it is used basically to close the uh, like windows open in the MATLAB. So I think this is the scoreboard. So nine five seven uh, four group number four has the lead. I will not give marks on this. Uh, so for element wise multiplication sizes of A and B must be the same or compatible. Is this true or false? Okay, so most of you got the correct answer. So element-wise multiplication, when you're doing that, you need to first con con consider whether they are of same size. If they're in the same size, you can do element-wise multiplication without any problem. If each element will be multiplied with the corresponding element in the other metrics. Uh, however, if they are different in size, you need to check whether they're compatible. If they're compatible, you can, uh, you can do element-wise multiplication and uh, in that element-wise notification, you will get a result resultant matrix which is different in dimension to the initial dimensions of the matrices we use for the multiplication. And okay, so this is a score. In math indexing starts from zero. Is this correct or false? This is false, right? So many of you got the correct answer. The so indexing starts from one. In MATLAB, indexing starts from one. In other programming languages, most of the time, indexing starts from zero. In most of the programming languages that you have, indexing starts from zero. But in MATLAB, indexing starts from one. So the scoreboard looks like this. So how do you comment a single line in MATLAB? I think I did not... 
discuss about the commenting properly, but hope you can give the correct answer in the way possible. Okay, so commenting can be done using the percentage mark. So the percentage mark is the one used for commenting in MATLAB. In other languages, you use double slash, right? In Python, for example, you use double slash commenting. Uh, and this uh, hash mark is used for um, commenting in like languages such as you know, C, as I, according to my knowledge. So there are different methods of commenting. In MATLAB, we use the percentage mark. The correct one so i think many of you got the correct answer in here uh, so what is the command to display the contents of a variable when i think i this didn't discuss that explicitly uh, in this class but Yeah, there's a function called display that you can use to display the values of a uh, certain variable. And you can define that inside brackets in the display function. So, yeah, the next question, what does MATLAB stand for? Yes, metrics laboratory. Many of you got the same answer. Okay. okay, so I think zero four is still in the lead. So, what is the default extension for MATLAB script files? So, what is the extension that is used to identify MATLAB files? Okay, so dot M type is the one which we use by default to save code uh, files of MATLAB. Now, other ones such as dot mat, it is used to uh, store a metrics, a metrics file with the values of the metrics. If it is dot text, it is like a notepad, uh, you know, format, right? So dot text dot pi, dot pi is the Python files. So the correct answer is dot n. <clears throat> Which command displays the path to current working directory in MATLAB? So, mm -hmm. so, right? So, the, the specific command that you can use to find the current working directory in MATLAB. So I believe I can go and show that. If you type pwd in this, you will be able to see the directory um, and the path to the current file that I'm working in. So uh, so this is actually uh, giving us the path to working directory. Right, path to working directory is given by pwd, gives us the direction or the path to the current uh, directory that we are working in. Right. So earlier questions that we had regarding display function, display function is basically uh, used to display any kind of variable that we define. Let's say display a variable A, 
and if you display the variable a uh, so display is a uh, is the function that we use to display certain value of a certain variable okay so we will move on to the next question which function is used to generate a matrix with random values between 0 and 1 Yeah, so first one is the correct answer. I think a lot of you got the correct answer. Right? We discussed about the rank function a lot and it gives the values between zero and one. And uh, based on the dimension that you define, it gives a dimension, it gives a matrix of that dimension. Each value in that matrix will have a value between zero and one. Okay, so zero, four is still in the lead. We can go ahead. Which MATLAB function is used to create an identity matrix? Here's the first one is the correct answer. Identity matrix are generated using I function. So we will go ahead. <clears throat> so what is the operator for matrix modification? Okay, so I think all of you got the correct answer, which is the star sign. So I think with that, we end the quiz. <clears throat> and 0, 4 is in the lead. So <clears throat> I think that's great. So the last, sorry, there's another question, sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, so the number of columns in the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix for, for certain matrix modification to happen. In here, we are not specifying the element-wise matrix modification. So this means the normal matrix modification. So most of you got the correct answer. So mathematically, uh, this is the correct answer, uh, which will have to the matrix modification. So I think with that, I think we end the quiz. So th these are the winners of the quiz. So I think I was not able to join all of you to the quiz and therefore I think I will not add uh, this mark to your final mark. So uh, since we are only able to join about 20 people in here. So I think uh, with that, I think I would like to end today's session. So if you have any questions, you can ask and uh, I will resolve your questions. Thank you, madam, for sharing your knowledge and make the session much more valuable. Madam, we are ready with a small token of appreciation. Please accept this, accept this with you, our most Heart place gratitude.
Thank you so much. It's time to you to clarify your doubts. If you have any question directed to madam, please use the raise hand option and we'll give you a chance to unmute one by one. We have five minutes to clarify your subject related matters. Your times start now. If you have any question, you can raise hand or also you can use the chat box to drop your questions. Uh, so, is there a way to download Mac OS or the Mac OS? I, um, so, with the current installation link, uh, are you not able to download? I think for the. Okay, so I uh, I will search about that and I will get back to you by maybe tomorrow or I mean the next session I will get back to you on that. Um, I think operating systems might not be a problem. I think uh, even for macOS it must be possible, but I don't know this uh, version is available. The latest version is available for the macOS um, that I need to figure out. It seems like questions are over. Once again, thank you, madam, for your great support. There is a kind reminder. We are having our third session on 20th December at 7 p.m. Hope you'll join the session. Before we conclude the session, we request all of you to switch on your cameras to take group photo. You can use the virtual background view drop in the chat box. We'll give you two minutes to get ready and then let's take the photograph.
Thank you everyone. Now it's time to conclude the today's session. Thank you everyone for joining us. Wishing you a journey. Wishing you, wishing you, wish you a success on journey ahead. Have a nice day. I am Imalka Sangarayanam signing off as the moderator. Thank you.